the SharePoint provisioning service is a relatively new service that we uh, released a few weeks ago, I think uh, mid-March, if I'm not mistaken, uh, through which uh, you can uh, uh, provision uh, uh, solutions based on provisioning templates uh, on your own tenant uh, really easily, just going to a website, uh, selecting the uh, template that you want to uh, apply on your target tenant, uh, providing uh, uh, the uh, admin consent uh, if uh, uh, you want to have our service to being able to provision stuff on your tenant, uh, and then uh, you will find uh, a new site uh, or new sites uh, created on your environment with uh, custom templates applied on top of them in order to be able to reproduce the lookbook uh, uh, solutions that we have uh, in SharePoint Online, as well as, generally speaking, uh, being able to have a demo environment uh, in a matter of few minutes uh, in order to show the uh, potential and the capabilities of SharePoint Online and the modern UI to your customers or to your users uh, uh, through uh, real uh, solutions deployed in your tenant. Under the cover of this service, there is the uh, PMP provisioning engine. And so let me show you briefly a, a walkthrough uh, of the uh, SharePoint Online provisioning service, and then I will explain you the architecture which is under the cover of the solution. This is the website. And as you can see here, you can browse through all of the available uh, templates. You can uh, pick up uh, whatever template you like, and you can see what are the main features and capabilities of every template, including, and you should uh, really read them, the prerequisites, which will give you some information about what is required to being able to provision uh, the uh, template on your tenant. For example, this one is a pretty simple one, but there are some templates which require, for example, uh, to have your user with uh, a, a, an admin account uh, in the uh, taxonomy service, or for some of the uh, templates, uh, we need to have uh, an already existing app catalog in your tenant, and you need uh, to take care of those prerequisites, otherwise the provisioning will not happen, of course, because uh, uh, the prerequisite will not be satisfied. And if you want to apply uh, any of the templates that we have uh, uh, available in the service, you just need to click on the Add to your tenant button. As you can see here, we highlight the required permissions to uh, apply this template. Right now, we have uh, just and only templates which require tenant admin permissions, but we are working on making it possible to provision these templates uh, just with site collection admin uh, um, rights, which can be a, a nice improvement to uh, allow people to to uh, test uh, stuff uh, without the need to being tenant admins. And once you click on the Add to your tenant, uh, you will be prompt with a uh, form which you can use to configure the uh, very basic settings for provision in the template, like, for example, an email address that you want to use uh, to get notified when the provisioning will be completed, uh, the title that you will have for the site that will be created, uh, and actually, if the site uh, uh, will be created, this will be the URL of the site, and in order to be sure that we don't overwrite anything that you already have, we validate that URL. If the site is already existing, you have two choices. You can select to override the existing site or update the existing site with the template, or you can just cancel and provide a different uh, URL. Most likely, this one will be available. Let's see. You can select a custom uh, graphical theme uh, for your template if you like. As you can see, I made quite a bit of testing on this tenant, so I have just a couple of uh, themes available. But you can select a custom theme and apply that one to the target site that will be created. Once you are done, you click the provision button. You get a recap of what will happen, uh, what we will do with the provisioning service targeting your tenant. And by clicking the confirm button, the provisioning process uh, will start. Under the cover, there will be the PMP provisioning engine, which will do the magic, will do the provisioning of all the stuff in your tenant. It can be the provisioning of a single site. It can be the provisioning of a hierarchy of sites, for example, in a site hub, if you want, based on the template that you will pick up. 
Uh, just to be clear, all of the templates that we use uh, in the provisioning service are stored in a GitHub repo, which is public and available on the network. This is the URL, github.com SharePoint SP Dev Provisioning Templates. And here you can find uh, all the tenant uh, level templates, which are those that require tenant admin permissions. For example, the drone landing is the one I picked up before, if I'm not mistaken. And here it is. And here you can see what is the .pmp file. You can even see the source code of the uh, .pmp file, and you can just download it and use it in your own environment if you don't want to use the website, uh, but you simply want to get the template and use it wherever you want. So, uh, let me go uh, briefly back to the slide deck to explain you what's under the cover of this service. So, first of all, as I said, uh, it's a service, it's a kind of PMP provisioning engine as a service, let me call it this way. And through the website, you can select the templates by category. Right now, we have samples and solutions. And once you have done that, uh, the very first time, you will have to log in with your tenant and grant the permissions to the application, which represents at the Azure Active Directory level the solution. Once you have done that, uh, uh, you will be able to schedule the provisioning of your template. Uh, as I said, which can be a single site or a hierarchy of sites. Under the cover, we have quite a complex uh, uh, scenario, quite a complex solution based on a bunch of Azure services. Uh, and I think this is a, a clear uh, example of how you can uh, leverage the powerful capabilities provided by Microsoft Azure. Uh, this is the whole list of services that we use. I don't want to uh, read all of them, but as you can see, there are quite a, a lot of them. And this solution will be open sourced soon or soonish, <laughs> as soon as we will be ready to do that. But stay tuned, you will have the source code of the solution, which is an Azure Active Directory multi-tenant solution. From an architectural perspective, what happens or what we have under the cover is, first of all, the website, the provisioning.sharepointpmp.com website. You log in, and we use Azure Active Directory to authenticate your user and to get uh, through the Open Authorization 2.0 flow all the uh, uh, required information to act uh, on your behalf, so an access token and a refresh token. We use the Azure Key Vault to store in a safe and secure way uh, those information so that when you request to provision a site, we store in the storage queue of Azure a message which will pick up uh, from, a, a from a job or from a function, and within the job or function, we can read from the key vault uh, the tokens that we need to uh, act uh, on your behalf, and we can uh, get eventually, if needed, a, even a fresh new access token using a refresh token stored in the Azure key vault, uh, so that we can use those tokens to talk with the micrograph, with the SharePoint Online REST APIs, and with all of the APIs that we need to talk with. And by doing that, we can create the sites, we can provision the artifacts, we can do all we need to do in order to uh, get ready to uh, release, to provision uh, the template onto your tenant. Once the job uh, is completed, we get rid of the tokens so that we don't keep any uh, sensitive information in our side, uh, and we simply get rid of them, uh, uh, removing them from the Azure Key Vault. Uh, from a, a sharing perspective, I want to share with you uh, the challenges or the key topics uh, of the architecture of the solution. First of all, we had uh, to make a solution which is highly available because there are quite a lot of people using this service nowadays, and we are pretty happy of that. We are really happy of that, actually. And uh, we are using the well-known asynchronous pattern that we promote as PMP that we have been promoting since a while ago. We also use a bunch of Azure services, which, of course, uh, makes our life easier in having an highly available solution. From a security perspective, what we do in the architecture of our solution has been reviewed by the Microsoft Identity Platform, and there is an ongoing update coming out, which will use MSAL 3.0, uh, together with a custom token cache, which will store the tokens in the Azure Key Vault. Right now, we do something different, but uh, now that we have MSAL 3.0, we are going to upgrade uh, the service toward uh, MSAL uh, 3. Uh, from a high-level permission uh, uh, demand uh, that we uh, need to satisfy in order to be able to provision the stuff, uh, 
if you don't want to grant uh, those high-level permissions, tenant-level admin permissions to our application, well, you can always download the packages and the solutions from the GitHub repo, and you can apply them with the classic approach using PowerShell or PMP site score. And one challenge that we faced and that we uh, had to uh, keep into account is, of course, throttling, because with a multi-tenant uh, solution, which is used by quite a lot of users on a daily basis, we need to take care of uh, not being throttled by uh, all of the services that we interact uh, with. So those are the main uh, key points of interest and challenges that we faced and that we solved with the architecture that I shared uh, uh, right now with you. And I think that's it on my side. If you don't have any specific uh, feedback or question, Beza, coming from the chat area. No, no, so nothing really major on the chat area. Velin, let's actually move into our screen. But while we're doing that, thank you, Paolo, uh, on this one. Just, um, so for me, Gautam is asking, is it GDPR compliant? Answer is yes, we're not storing anything. So there is no information stored about uh, anybody about the, uh, the person. So answer is yes. Um, and that's one of, by the way, one of the reasons why we don't actually store any information. So there's no need then for GDPR uh, challenges. Now, um, on Johanna's comments, super interesting, thanks. Uh, so like I said, uh, we will start, uh, that's meant to be open sourced uh, as fast as possible as a reference implementation on how to build multi-tenant applications, which can then access uh, multiple, uh, multiple uh, tenants. So um, we are still working on the open source uh, permissions, and that's a legal thing, uh, but that should be uh, happening sooner or later.